Hello, everybody, and welcome to our daily devotional time. I am Ellie Cobb, Director of Family Ministries here at St. John's United Methodist Church, and welcome to our daily devotional time. Today is Tuesday, July 7th, or July 11th of 2023, and welcome to our time together. This is our point midday where we get to pause together as a community of faith and share in the upper room devotional together, share in some prayer and reflection with one another. So if you're joining me now live or even a little bit later on in the day, if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment below, we always like to know which ones of our friends pop by. Today we'll be in the book of Laminations. So if you have your Bible and would like to follow along, you are more than welcome to do so. And if you'd like to listen along, you are more than welcome to do so as well. Give all of our friends a few moments to hop on before we begin, and then we will get started. Hope everybody is having a great start to their Tuesday. And for some reason, I still cannot see comments if people are leaving them live, so I'm sure that there are many of you that are hopping on right now, and welcome very much. Laminations chapter 1 is where we will be at today, and I will be um, reading out of the Common English Bible for anybody who um, would like to follow along. Okay. Let us begin. Laminations chapter 1, verses 1 through 7 of the Common English Bible. Oh no, she sits alone. The city that was once full of people. Once great among nations, so she has become like a widow. Once a queen over provinces, she has become a slave. She weeps bitterly in the night, her tears on her cheek. None of her lovers comfort her. All her friends lied to her. They have become her enemies. Judah was exiled after her suffering and hard service. She lives among the nations. She finds no rest. All who were chased, seeing her, caught her right in the middle of her distress. Zion's roads are in mourning. No one comes to the festivals. All her gates are deserted. Her priests are groaning, her young woman grieving. She is bitter. Her adversaries have become rulers. Her enemies relax. Certainly the Lord caused her grief because of her many wrong acts. Her children have gone away, captive before her enemy. Daughter Zion lost all her glory. Her officials are like deer that can't find pastures. They have gone away, frail before the hunter. While suffering and homeless, Jerusalem remembers all of her treasures from days long past. When her people fell by the enemy's hands, there are no one to help her. Enemies saw her and laughed at her defeat. And our devotion today is lamina or and our focus verse for today is Laminations 1 1 of the NIV. How deserted lies the city, once full of people. And our thought for today is, God is big enough to bear my grief. And our prayer focus today is congregations that have split. And our devotion today comes from Colleen Shield of Ohio. And these are her thoughts that she is sharing with us today. A place for lament. Laminations is a heartbreaking commentary on the state of Jerusalem after it fell to the Babylonians. Few people remained in the shattered city. The rest had died or gone into exile and had no one to comfort them. I felt some of this pain when my church split. After so many people left our church in the city to start a new one in the suburbs, I was heartbroken. I looked around the historic sanctuary its stained glass windows shining over vacant pews. Our empty Sunday school hall echoed with more teachers than children. It was all too quiet. It felt like God was no longer with us either. I was tempted to despair. Just as the grieving prophet of Laminations remembered his beautiful city, I thought back on service filled with smiling people, children singing, and banners waving. Laminations offers us a map through grief. First, reality is faced boldly and loss felt bravely. Then the searing pain is brought to God. The prophet who wrote the book cries out, See, Lord, how distressed I am. I am tormented within. Laminations 120. Only then can, we, can he move on to hope. Only then can the rebuilding start. It is the same with me. When something terrible happens, I cannot fully heal until I face reality, pour out my pain, and lean into God's presence. 
even when God feels far away. So in thinking about today's devotion, kind of thinking about the state of the United Methodist Church, which Jim uh, touched on a little bit on Sunday and everything, um, we are going through a little bit of a split right now. There are a handful of churches that have left. Um, I can't remember the exact um, number or statistic. More of us have decided to stay um, in the United Methodist Church um, than to walk away. Um, but those people are hurting, um, whether they're, they're a part of the congregation that's split, whether they have family members within. There are a lot of us that have hurting hearts right now. And when thinking about this, um, they're kind of, you know, the walking wounded, so to speak, and everything. And it hurts our hearts when there's any conflict um, amongst us. And whether you're part of a church that has split, um, whether your church has gone through changes over time, sometimes your church might not have split over um, any um, kind of tenuous reason. Um, but maybe it has just changed over time. Maybe it's not as full as it once was. Um, I'm sure anybody that's gone to a church for any number of years, you can always reminisce over the days gone by. And it is always part of a grieving process. And God is there with us during that grieving process. And sometimes through that grief, um, it allows other things to grow. Um, I know we have a few new congregation members that have started coming that um, are coming from different churches that are no longer. Um, and all that we can do as a people and as a community of faith is just to welcome them with loving and open arms. Um, not always a lot needs to be said or rehashed, um, but just be a listening ear for those that are hurting and be um, a welcoming people open them with um, open hearts, open minds, um, and our open doors each and every day um, because those people are looking for a home. Um, and when a church is no longer your church anymore, it does feel almost like a death of a family member because churches are a part of our family. They are our family. They're our church family. So whenever we go through that loss um, and that separation, um, it leaves a hole within our heart. And it's just good to be mindful of the grief and the grieving process for those persons that are going through that. Um, and to welcome them with their ideas because they have new ideas and new perspectives and traditions that we can welcome into our fold um, as well. So just keeping that open heart and open mind um, as we go forth um, as a community of faith. Let us pray. Dear Almighty God, help us to bring our pain and sorrow to you. Give us the courage to lament our losses and tell you how we really feel. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I hope everybody has a great rest of their Tuesday, and I will see you back here again on Thursday. Take such good care. Bye-bye.